Hey, so I'm Rachel Gallagher. I'm a student at Emory & Henry School of Health Sciences, and I'm going to be showing you today how to set up a classroom blog to help ease your students back into the school routine. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to go to Blogger, www.blogger.com, and the link is going to be in our presentation as well. So on this site, you can basically just make a blog where you're the administrator and you can add authors. So I'm going to click create your blog. So you will be seen as display name, teacher name, whatever name your children call you by, your students call you by. Continue to blogger. So this basically just is talking about blogger. Uh, if you start your own account, you can definitely read into this further. But for now, I'm going to press create blog up here in the upper left-hand corner. So what am I going to call my blog? I'm going to call it classroom blog. Very exciting. I'm going to spell classroom blog incorrectly. This is why we need teachers to teach me not to spell blog with a semicolon. And the address is going to be what they type in. So I'm going to be putting classroom blog southwest virginia dot blogspot dot com. Blog address is available. Awesome. And we can go and create the blog. If one of you wants this domain name, you are welcome to it. I will take it down. Create blog. Classroom blog created successfully. Great. So there's no posts. The way that you make a post is you click this big red plus sign at the bottom that says create new post. And here we can enter our blog post. Here you can put something about, um, here you can put something about whatever you want your students to know about you before you see them again. Uh, you can talk about the crisis. You can talk about your classroom expectations. It's a beautiful blank canvas that you could use for whatever you want. So I'm going to say that I've put something very poignant here, and I'm going to publish the post. And the way that you do that is you click on this paper airplane. And as you see, when you hover your cursor over it, it says publish. So this whole thing is pretty self-explanatory, I think. All right. And... We have to make sure that our cursor is on the right screen. So this is going to publish the post to the blog. Confirm. That's great. We have one untitled post by teacher name. But after you type your post, maybe you're going to want your students to contribute to your blog so that they can have a feeling of ownership over the classroom. And that's when you're going to go into the settings. So. And now we're on your settings page on your blogger account. So let's scroll down and see what's changed. So you have your title, your description. If you have a blog in a language other than English, if you have ESL students, you can change the language. And what you might want to do for privacy, since you just want your class to be able to see this, is you want, might want to take off the visibility to search engines. That way, they can't look for your blog on Google. They have to enter the address right into the search bar. You can change the name of your address. You can change the custom domain. So if it doesn't let you save it as uh, Mrs. Faber class .blogspot.com, because there already is a Mrs. Faber .blogspot.com, you can have a custom domain but you might have to buy it. So I would suggest finding one that you, that hasn't already been taken. Uh, you definitely want this checked. This is in case somebody types it in slightly wrong. It'll go to the right place. So here we have blog admins and authors. So as you saw, you're the admin. The author can actually make posts and can delete posts. So. You might not want to let a student become a blog author and be able to contribute directly on the site unless you have a lot of trust in that student and they've proven themselves. You might instead want to 
scroll down a little further and enable post using email. So it's under email. You would click post using email and you would have an email for posting. So what you would do is you would save emails as draft posts. And that way a student will send an email to this address. They don't have to use their Google email. This is probably the best option for a large class. The email is automatically saved as a draft post and at your leisure, you're able to go through and you're able to go and at your leisure, you're able to go through and edit or screen their posts. And it'll have a specific time that the email was sent. It'll, it'll be posted at the time that the email was sent and it will allow you to have absolute control over what the students are posting, which may be something that you are looking for. Please provide a secret word that is not secret words. So they should be hard for others to guess, but easy for you to remember. How about we go with back to class Southwest Virginia? And that way, anyone who sends an email to this address is going to show up as a draft post. Great. Save emails as draft posts. Wonderful. So I am going to send an email to this address and I will show you how that works. So let me just stop recording. I've sent a, an email to the post as draft email address and we're going to see how it shows up. So we're going to click on posts and look at that. We have a post that says hi there as the title. The title is the email subject. So you can either automatically publish it or so something that you may want to do is click on their post. You can still edit their post after it has been posted, but this is mainly so that you can take off the option to comment. So you can right now just click do not allow hide existing just to cover all your bases. And you can actually allow them to comment on each other's posts and act as a moderator. But because of how the platform works, it only allows moderation for posts that are older than 14 days. So I would suggest just not allowing comments. Thank you so much for listening to this presentation and for watching this video. And hopefully you can set up a classroom blog of your own. We hope you find this useful and have a great day.